Hello YouTube, this is my ESC here, and my motor's still attached. Um, my ESC uh, got some water in it, so I want to show you how I get my ESC uh, back on the road after water damage. Um, this is a kind of pretty old ESC, so if yours doesn't work, then and if yours still has a warranty, I um, wouldn't really do this. And the supplies that you will need is some pliers, a Phillips head screwdriver, and some Q-tips to clean the water off with. First, what you want to do is move your motor aside, get your ESC, and on the back of your ESC you have four screws. You want to remove all those screws and make sure you put them in a good spot. My water is already dripping out, uh, water is already dripping out of the ESC so like the steering and all that will still work but the engine won't turn on. That's just for me. I don't know about whatever your ESC is doing. Like I said, this is a pretty old one. I don't know if the newer ESCs will work if you do this or not. <clears throat> so after you get all those screws, I'm done. You want to take them out and set them in a separate pile. And once you have water or water damage, you want to clean. You want to do this right after it, like if it's not working. Alright, <clears throat> what you want to do now, if you have a, uh, just a flathead screwdriver laying around, you want to easily put it inside those creases and push up until you can get it done. And you want to clean this back off. There's some water in there. You could use a cloth for this. Just clean that all up. Set that aside. I'll put it over the screws so they don't get rolled off the table. And next, you want to get your heat sinks off. You get your pliers, you put it on the heat sink, and you push it back and it just comes off. But I, I took this in the part a couple times, so it's probably going to be a, little, be a little bit harder for you. And next, grab the top of the heat sinks, push down, take the top off, clean the top off. After you do that, your the chip is exposed and it's not usually the top that needs to be cleaned it's usually the bottom but it's also the top grab a dry q-tip and brush it all over the uh, chip but make sure there's no sharp edges on your uh, q-tip show them. make sure it's all cotton and just run it over these uh, these soldering points Make sure you get all the uh, stuff off those. Get your other side just in case. Run it over with your hands, see if it's still out there. That should be good. And just clean inside these. This top right here come off, but I've taken it off too many times. And one of these little pins might break off. It looks like that one's about to, so I'm not going to take that off dry your hands off make sure you don't get any more water back on what you want to do now is plug it into the radio let me just do that real quick and then you want to plug it into the battery let me just get this battery and the red light comes on Get your controller, turn your controller on, whoops, oh there it goes, it's working. Now I'm using a dead battery so, okay first, once you already got the water out of your, uh, clean the water out off of your uh, ESC, you want to press the gas. Let's see here. I want to barely press it like that. Run it there for a little bit. 
and then a little go a little bit higher and just go up higher RPM so you can get the voltage through there. Okay, so I just successfully uh hang on, let me just get this trim right. Okay, the red light should go on. Then green. Okay, well, all right. Unhook that since you know it all works now. Unplug it from the battery here. Unplug it from the radio. Now what you want to do is grab your top case after you clean that off. Let me just clean that off real quick, I didn't have time. And what you want to do after you clean this off, you want to stick it back on like this. Make sure those are still good. Flip it around. Grab this side. Make sure the grooves are on the right. Make sure this rubber stopper right there is good. Push down. Grab your screws that you set aside. Put them in each of the side, each of the uh, screw holes. Get that all good. And grab your Phillips head screwdriver and make sure you screw these in uh, uh, tightly, not too tight though, so you will strip them just real tight. And do those for all of them. Make sure they're equal. Uh, you tighten them all equal. And just go around and do the other side. And make sure you tighten them. And then tighten these two. And the last one. Tighten that up real good. Get your heat sinks. Put it on the top of it like that. Grab your pliers, grab the heat sink, and rock it back and forth onto it. Press it all the way down. Grab your bigger heat sink, stick it on there, and again, rock it back and forth until you get it on there. Like that. And there you go. You got your, uh, Water damaged ESC fixed and ready to go back on the road. And of course, the car that I got it out of. My kit car. So that's all you need to do. If you got water damage, um, as you can see, it's very old. Let's see, this is from... Uh, uh, it doesn't say what model. Well, it does. It doesn't say what year. I was using a dead battery, so that's why I didn't have a whole lot of RPMs. So, water damage makes uh, the lights all on this and stuff work, but the motor won't turn over. So, take it apart like I just showed you. Clean it up. Put it back together, and your motor should start turning. And remember to give it just a little gas, and then a little bit increase it more and more and more so the voltage will, uh, the voltage will go through the circuits equally and there you go that's how you fix a uh, water damaged ESC on some of them make sure you check it with your warranty first All right, anyway, apart from us.